mold and uh, welcome to see us go to the sound components here. Thank you, thank you, Adar. Uh, you know, building robots is always complicated. Building it, flying one is even more. Uh, and like in any autonomous machine, you need uh, you need to understand the, the, the environment to, to be able to navigate and to be able to get one place to another. And uh, and SLAM is the, the name uh, for this technology. It's a simultaneous localization and mapping. Uh, it's basically the core of uh, any mobile robot in order to navigate efficiently in, uh, in the environment. Uh, Dr. Uh, Yudai Limelech, uh, CEO and founder of Cogniteam, uh, for the past seven years, he has also been the dean of, uh, he is, uh, the dean of uh, computer science in the College of uh, Management at the Mishnah uh, Limina. A lot of knowledge and experience in Islam, and he's going to try to teach us a bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Yudel Maliach. I will present here today uh, Slum Solutions. So, you know, Talk a bit what is SLAM, okay, and a bit of the solution over the years. So uh, before we start talking about SLAM, first we'll talk about robot autonomy. In any mission of robots that need to do it and to work in autonomy in an autonomous way, we'll find the same building blocks repeated. When I say robot, I mean mobile robot or something like that, not the industrial one. Okay, so we will find the same building block. The robot needs to know its location. The robot needs to know how to recognize obstacles. The robot needs to navigate, to calculate the path. It needs to take decisions along missions. And over all of that, now program your mission. But what I say are the, the, the significant building blocks that we need to solve. And the two building blocks today that we are talking is mapping and localization. There are a lot of packages over the internet, over ROS, you find a lot of packages of, uh, of uh, SLAM and you can put and, and you can uh, do a demonstration. But still, this problem is focused on research and there are a lot of new papers uh, uh, on SLAM, okay, on the problems that I will present today, which means that this is not a solved problem yet in any case, because I, I will talk about it uh, at the end, about a bit of the conclusion of this uh, problem. So first we talk, what is SLAM? I'm sure that there is an, an expert in Islam. Ah, okay. So I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, experts here in Islam, but I will talk to somebody that doesn't know exactly what Islam at all, and, and try also to enter to the uh, formula uh, in this uh, presentation. So uh, Islam is to be able to estimate the position of a robot and the map of the environment at the same time. So the robots need to know its location, and its location, and also build the map. So the problem considered as, as a, a difficult problem because in order to be able to localize yourself, you need to know the map, where the map is, and then I will localize myself on the map. In vice, in, in vice versa, we need to, in order to build the map, we need to know where we are located. So, so it's a, even call it the chicken or the egg problem. Of, I give me a map, I give you my location. Give me my location, I will give you I will give you the map. In Islam, it's you don't have you don't have the location, you don't have the map, and you need to do it simultaneously. That what we call Islam, simultaneous localization and mapping. And and uh, uh, a bit about the concept of Islam is robots start without knowing anywhere. Now he open his sensors and see everything. When he start its, its location, let's say we are in Indo, there is no GPS signal, you don't know anything. So when I open my sensor, I can see objects, I can put them in the map, in a new map that I build now. Okay, this is what I see. Then the robot move a bit, okay? Now he need to localize itself in the new, in the previous map that he built, 
and also he see another things that he didn't see before because he moved to another place and he need to find where he is located in the same way it is located in the same in the same house. So let's take those three examples, a belief of the location of the rock. So you will see here, you see this is the grave, this is a great location, this is the first location, the second, the third, he doesn't know really where, he, where it is, but this, those are three beliefs. This is the location and the orienta orientation of the road where it, where it looks. So when it moves, let's say delta x, delta y, delta theta, this is what you think by, by it moves. Then it moves itself over the second stage here, here it moves to here, and this is the movement here, okay? Then he opened his sensors and start recognize landmarks, obstacles, something that you see in the previous, in the previous, uh, uh, and in the previous step, uh, and in this simple example, we will assume we have two sensors, let's say two sonars, and now it feels obstacles. It's open uh, with the, with these sensors, you look at the map, and it sees that it corrected here to its location, you see here, we are this is my, this is a good expectation where I am located, okay? And here, oh. and here it doesn't fit good to the set, to the location, but it's quite close. There is a epsilon space between them, so we understand I'm quite close. And here, this is not really my location. So this is the concept of slam, and we do it iteratively uh, uh, from step to another. Uh, uh, this is the main concept. <laughs> now, let's look about this example. It's fast slam, an algorithm uh, uh, that do that. They develop it here for, a, a, for a, the a rover in Mars to localize itself. And what you see here is in the, in, in the it always recognize these landmarks and localize itself based on the landmark that you already see. And the gray, the gray one, the blue the blue line is the location by odometry only, which you see there is no correlation to the location. And the green one is by using this uh, landmark, and what you, as I explained earlier in the concept. Uh, and the red one is the relocation. You see, it's very accurate. While you always you always correct yourself based on what you see. So if we look at the SLAM, there are a few families. There is the filter-based solutions, which you can find Kalman filter, part, uh, particle filter, I will talk about them. Uh, and there are a lot of algorithms, G-mapping that you can find also in ROS, is part of, is a particle filter base. Kalman filter, you can see Hector that uh, uh, Hadar talked about it uh, earlier, it's based on Kalman filter. The fast slam, the, the, the movie I showed earlier, is based on Kalman filter and particle filter. So that was, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of algorithms in this family. There are also a global optimization algorithm, we'll talk about them later. And now a newer one, it's called the CNN slam, based on or neural networks uh, uh, slam. So let's talk about uh, a bit about um, terminology in slam. That's the note XT to be the location of the robot at time t, okay? The location, it's e in x, y, and theta. This is the location of the robot. x1 is the location of the robot at time one. ut is the, is the motion model, it's the motion of the robot. u, t, the motion of the robot at time t. So it starts in a, a specific place, then in u1, it moves a delta x, delta y, delta theta. You can get it from, <coughs> Somebody can help me? Odometry? Okay, from IMU, movement by IMU. Okay, this is that you can get, get it by, by the IMU, or odometry or something like that. ZT is, the, is, is what the sensor, the, the measurement sensor say. <coughs> measurement sensor, for example, lidar, depth camera, yeah, sonars, I don't know. Okay, so this is Z, Z is the measurement unit, ZT, it's what was the measurement at time T. And then we have a map. We have map uh, uh, M1, <coughs> M2, etc. Those are the maps that we, the robot start mapping while it moves. Okay, and L, we can also look at landmark map and not just obstacle map. It depends on the, the mapping uh, and what we need from the mapping. A bit about maps. 
what you see here called occupancy grid. Occupancy grid is a grid, a two grid, that in each cell we can color in three uh, colors to choose one of them. White, there is no obstacle there. Black, there is obstacle there. Gray, we don't know what what going there because no, uh, we didn't measure this uh, uh, this place at all. So the occupancy grid is, is also a probabilistic because uh, in each cell we have a number. Let's say if I see a cell nine times that it was free and one time it was occupied. So the probability of this cell will be 0 0.9 to be occupied. Yeah, uh, occupied, yeah, I really understand the concept. Okay. <laughs> and and this is the, and then we present the map based on, on the occupation, because if, 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 if I see this place and it's always, it's always free, then the person moves, okay? And now I see it's occupied, I will put it to be occupied? No, we want a, a robust map, not a map that changes because of small changes. That's why we, we, we collect the data as a, a, as a data, uh, a, a probability data. Another way to cut, to, to uh, save maps is in a point cloud. You can catch it, catch it in a point cloud. You have a vector of, or you have an array of points with X, Y, Z location. This is one, it's difficult to find in this, uh, in, in the point cloud the data structure. A, a very useful data structure for a, a for maps in a two, in a 3D, we call it a 2.5D. It's the elevation map. The elevation map is a map, it's actually a grid, <coughs> that in each cell at the grid, there is a height. If written there 1.5, it means from 1.5 meter to the earth, there is the something, there is an obstacle. Okay, so it's very easy to calculate and to do in real time calculation and, and navigation on those kind of maps. Uh, uh, but the problem is that it's not fully 3D. <laughs> not fully 3D because if we try to put a bridge there and there is a quadcopter that needs to navigate there, I can't see what, I can't understand if I can go behind because all the bridge will be occupied, okay? There are another, another data structure called multi-level surface map which allow us with few levels of elevation maps and it gives you a bit, it's a 3D but it's not so accurate 3D as the, the, the Octo tree, uh, uh, as the Octo tree that I will explain now. Octo tree is also a, a map that we catch it, we look as a cube, you see here in the example, as a cube, we, we divide the cube to eight small cubes. Each, each uh, and the, the big cube is a node, we, we represent it as a tree. Each tree has eight leaves, and each leaf also is a cube, and it also has eight leaves, etc. Until we arrive to a specific, to a specific cube that represents it. So what if we don't open all the space, but if we see, if you stay, take this cube, and you see this is all this one divided by eight is free. Okay, there is nothing there. I don't need to to divide it uh, again. So what you see, this the relevant, the relevant sum. The relevant sun is white, is a leaf, okay? So it's very uh, express uh, data structure, and it's quite good to uh, uh, to represent it a 3D uh, map. And also we can define the resolution if we want until a specific depth, so we can also define the resolution of the 3D that we want to catch. And here you can see an example, not for SLAM, but uh, in a real time using an elevation map, you see this uh, uh, robot moves two rotating leaders here and here, and it moves and see that the elevation map here, what he sees, he understands, I can go, I can't, and then you build this map, and 2.5D actually in practice very useful as a map. Okay? And a bit you will see that this is not a mapping, because only it projects what it can gather from the leaders. Okay, so this is what you see in front and back, and this is using the uh, elevation map. So, uh, terminology about SLAM, okay? PZT given XT 
It means that what is the probability? Uh, or we can look at, let's look about this, this is exactly the same. So what is the probability that we are in location T and M is the, the specific map and ZT is what we see. Meaning that I am the robot. This is my sensor, okay? And I'm standing here, this is the map. And what is the probability that it, my sensor touch now an obstacle? In this situation, it's zero, yeah? In this situation, what is the probability? One, because my tensor, my tensor, my, my sensor, sorry, catch and touch an obstacle, an obstacle, okay? So what is the probability now if my sensor touch an obstacle? It's not zero, it's not one, but it's quite close because if I move a bit, it will be very close. So if I um, do a, a small search around the map, I find that my sensor can catch this uh, obstacle. So this is P, Z, D given X, D. What is the probability, okay, of when we are in location X, D, and this is the map to read Z, D. This is the uh, uh, observation model. The motion model is what is the probability to be in location X, D, while in the previous step, my location was in X, T minus one, and I move delta X, delta Y, delta theta. What, it's look, what, what, what is that question? What is what my uh, probability? Because if I was in X, me, e, X, T minus one, and I move delta X, delta Y, delta theta, I can calculate it where I am in X, T. But now, if it's accurate, yeah. And it's very, uh, yeah, of course, it, it's depend, what is the environment, okay? It depends the, the 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 robot itself. Maybe we have a robot that go very very uh, very accurate when it moves straight, but when it take a sharp turn, it loses its the uh, accuracy. So it's important also to make it uh, and, and and make it very uh, close to the specific uh, target uh, robot. So those are the basic of the observation model and the motion model. And now we'll talk about the belief. Now each robot, the robots calculate it. They need to calculate its uh, location. It need, it has its belief how accurate I am, how I think that I am in the location that I think I am. So the belief xt, the belief that I am in location xt, meaning what is the probability to be in xt, in xt, while given all the reading from starting, all the readings, all the sensors reading and all the uh, uh, movement motion. This is the belief. And in order to calculate the belief, we will use also a predicted belief. A predicted belief XT means that what is the probability to be in XT while I get all the information of real sensor reading from one, two, three minus one, and all the movement until <coughs> T without the, the last reading. Okay, this is a predicted belief. and. When we enter it to a, a to a formula, when we when we want to calculate the location of the robot, we will take what is my belief now in X T. We will look what is what, it's depend on the belief where I was in X T minus one. I'll take the belief of being in T X T minus one, and I multiply it by the probability of the movement from for of the last step. This is the motion model. So what is my belief here? Then I move to x t minus one. What is my uh, uh, probability? What is the probability to the accuracy of the movement? And all of that, all of that, we will we will multiply it by the probability of the observation model, how it fit to the map. And since we, it's always a, a multiplication of uh, of the frequency, so we need to to put here a normalization factor. The normalization factor gives it the right number. So this is the iterative step. In each step, we, we do that. So uh, uh, enough for the mathematics, okay? <laughs> That's all. And now uh, what I told you here, we will see it in the movie, okay? Hamster is a platform that we are uh, selling in uh, Cognitive. We develop it, and it's actually for programmer, developer, students, uh, academia, companies that want to do a, a, a program robot, robots and don't want to solve the basic problem, they want to show their the specific mission. Let's say I have a robot that needs to patrol in places. This is the algorithm I want to invent. 
I need to know my location, to take decision, to calculate the path, etc. And the Hansi already everything implemented in Anster. Just write in the API what you want to do, and and it's solved. So what I present here is only localization. There is a given map. Okay. <laughs> What you see here, you see here, those are the particles. The particle has the location of the robot, doesn't know where it is located, okay? But you think, maybe I hear, maybe I hear, a lot of dots, are green dots are the particles. What do you think it is? Now we start moving, move to a specific location, exactly what we see. Each particle, we think that you have an array of particles that they have x, y, theta, and belief. Now I am doing a next step. So I need to update each of the particles, write a, a, a loop that update all of those particles. So what I give to each particle, I tell him you move delta x, delta y, delta theta, and this is your new reading. You take the belief, multiply it, okay, move the particle, and 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 give a mark of how it fit to the, to the uh, reading. What you see here, this is the map. Okay, the red, we took here the best particle that we have by its belief, or there is also a problem how to choose the best particle, not, not the best particle, the best belief, maybe, but if the, uh, the best particle was here and his belief was 0 0.9, and there was 10 here with 0 0.89, okay, which we prefer to be its location, probably the group, okay? So there is an, this is another problem to choose the best particle. But let's say here, we took the best particle, and this is the reading of the leader. You see, it's not accurate. It doesn't fit exactly. See here, there is no obstacle here, okay? And what you see, this is the best fit, the best fit that he finds, okay? So iteratively, in this way, we update the particle, the robot moves, and always the particle updated, and, and there is no accurate fit to everything, but it's the better one than the other. So. Okay, and uh, this is a mapping. There is no map in head, and now the robot maps. And I will show you something interesting here. Now the robot moves. It maps the environment, <coughs> and in the mapping, as exactly this explained in the localization, I am moving the particle, update its belief, and also in. in uh, add information to the map. If I didn't see uh, in previous, I am update the map to, uh, to a specific thing that I, see, uh, that I see now. And now you will see the robot moves, you will build this room, and will be something interesting when, you, uh, when we will enter to this room. Not here. Mm. Okay, now it entered to this room, and, oh, you see what happened? The, the map is start, the map is broken now, it's not very good, it choose, it choose a particle, a, a not very good particle, and there is a problem, and then you will see, you will jump now, you see what happened? Oh. And now we will jump and fix it. You see, fix it, why, how we fix the map? Because it's fine that the previous particle was not the best one, and it replaced particles, and now this is the better particle. So in mapping and not in localization, each particle have its own x location, y location, theta, and map. There is no single map in particle filter. In particle filter, each particle has its own map. So if we have 100 particles, we have 100 map, maps in memory, okay? This is how it works, let's say, G-mapping or something like that. Hector slam, what it do, it's, it, it have its own location, for particle base, it has its own location, single one, and it get the information for the IMU, okay? Get the information from the IMU, enter it to kind of a filter, get a, a, the leader scan, a, and, and find the best accurate, also enter it to a common filter, it get its accurate location, and do it by pyramid. I can't explain, because uh, I have to show few other things. This is Hector Slam. Never had a show with Hector. Okay, let's talk about vision. Vista. Okay? 
There are a, a, another few families in the vision, vision uh, Visla. You will see Orb Slam. Orb Slam is a feature based. There, it's a single camera and you do slam. How we do it? You take in each camera, in each uh, picture, you find features. And the feature, let's say, feature, if we are look, you are looking on the uh, uh, on this wall, this is a good feature. You see, it's quite understandable. Okay, this is also a good feature. Okay, so in each image, we will find features. And then in the next uh, robot moves, and in the next image, we will find another feature. And now we find to correlate to find the correlation between those features. Oh, this feature I see in the earlier, and I understand how 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 the movement of the camera. And when it understand the movement of the camera, it build a feature map. Oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> Sorry. You are not the robot. Sorry? You are not the robot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> single map, small map. Okay, so this is what uh, you do uh, in Orb Slam, and you see those features, very unique one, recognize, understand those features, and when you return to the specific place and understand this is the feature that I see earlier, you know how to close also loop here, this is the way you do it and it moves, find the features, and you see this, bla is it this uh, uh, blue, uh, blue uh, dots are actually a keyframe. You save key, 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 frame, 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 and you do the correlation between those frames by tracking the, fe the uh, feature here and understanding how much, uh, uh, understanding the movement of the camera. This is Orb Slump. Another is LSD Slump. It, it's uh, uh, called large, uh, large scale direct molecular slam. Also, the uh, advantage here uh, is that also understand, uh, compare it to, uh, to the map and also do it by uh, images, but it's not understand, it's not search for uh, specific features because the problem with searching specific features is using less information of the images. Here, you do it by intensities of the image and, and you can get a better, a better uh, uh, better uh, corresponding uh, between image because you have a lot of uh, information and this is what this lamp do and you see here a lot of information and not the small features and also using also keyframes and you do the correlation and build the map here. The problematic here is of course here and with LSD if you do it with a single camera is you don't have, you don't have the, the distances so it's accurate uh, until it's accurate uh, uh, until a scale specific scale. It doesn't have a scale. Uh, there is a problem with uh, uh, when you, you move or rotate the camera. Okay, there is a problematic. Those two algorithm LSD and Orb fail. Uh, and uh, if we are talking about a specific location where there is no a rich texture or or, or uh, we can't find features. They, they have a problem. And one of the latest algorithms are based on convolutional neural network called CNN SLAM. It's they, they teaching and, and, and uh, the specific machine to recognize depths from a single camera, okay, using a neural network. And then you can see this, this image, you can see this image, this is a depth. The colors uh, represent depths, 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 okay, different depths. And this is the same picture using LSD slab. LSD do the, the, the correlation between edges, okay? Find very good edges, okay? So the problematic here is that it doesn't find edges, but here it finds edges, but here there is also a distance that using the convolutional neural network. And what they do in CNN slab, they combine, this is an RGB regular image. The depth that they find is here. And now they also run LSD and find the features and be able to give the distances because in LSD it's good at, at the edges. And together, what you can see here is a map using this convolutional neural network and you build a map and also understand a object in the map and not only depth but also object and... This is for molecular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a monocular camera, and the, the big advantage is to be able to calculate the depth. And uh, another one is also, this is the LSD slam. You see they're rotating the camera and see what happened to the depth, what happened to the, to the, uh, to the map. And this is the, uh, 
the CNN slam, which is better and better way. So the main, uh, uh, so you see different algorithm for slam, okay? But now what? This is a solve. Uh, this is a solve problem. It depends in the specific areas. It's a solve problem. But now if you are trying to, to develop your new robot and you want it to be at a specific bone, okay? And you want a slum solution that will cost no more than $50, you need to build your own one. There is no official solution. Intel will show us, yeah, yeah where? <laughs> will show us the official solution, okay? And, and it start entering a solution for the slum problem, okay? But when you actually want to be, uh, to work in a mass, you will find need to define your own and solve your own uh, problem using a variety of algorithms to slump. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. Um, take, take some questions now. You have a question on the audience? Yeah. <coughs> all those vision based slams. Yeah, uh, there are there are you know a uh, RGB slam which use like the Kinect or the real sense or something like that that use also measure depths. There are stereo vision slam that so also you can get. Uh, and molecular slam, <coughs> they use only the, the camera. The, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, there are uh, there are neato robotics that use protecting little. Okay, I robot to use a camera. What why look at at the 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 ceiling, okay? When you look at the ceiling, you know the distance to the ceiling because it's, it's, it's quite staying the same. And you also see obstacle uh, object from from the side, and this is the way you do that. Okay. Need to using uh, uh, off the shelf slam. Okay, it's a rotating leader, and it's quite easy. This problem is considered totally solved. Okay, in an indoor environment, rotating uh, leader. You can use what you have in the room. Which is best? I think Roomba, uh, uh, because it's it's less. Uh, the bomb is lower than to, to put a leader. Okay, inside. I don't know exactly what is the bomb for the leader, but the accuracy. The, uh, you see what is good in the accuracy manner or or in the price manner. Okay, it's different. I think it's the ultimate question, what is better? Mm -hmm. Everyone can say it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what does Mobile I use for its single camera? Mobile I use for their uh, Actually, I don't know to tell you. I didn't look at the no. But I understand. There is, uh, okay. About slam. Do car need slam? <laughs> Why? You have a GPS. And it's not accurate to drive on the road, but if you are just understanding where what is the road, it's quite good. I don't need, they don't need slump, okay? You can say, I understand this is the white from right, and this is the white from left. I am on the road, it's okay. Okay, it's quite good for me. I don't need to build a map and to know in one centimeter accuracy what is my location, okay? So not all of the problems need actually slump. Uh, last, last question. Over there at the top, the next one. I haven't seen it. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. Yeah.